okay we have uh, two systems we have first uh, ax equal to b I am calling that uh, as system 1 and uh, cx uh, equal to d calling that system 2 okay then uh, what we have uh, observed yesterday is the following if uh, each equation of 2 if each equation of system 2 is a linear combination of the equations of system 1 if each equation of system 2 is a linear combination of the equations of system 1 then each solution of 1 is a solution of 2 and conversely okay let me make it more precise Uh, this statement uh, for uh, the you can one can interchange uh, the roles of systems 1 and 2 and uh, say that uh, if uh, any equation of system 1 is a linear combination of the equations of system 2 then any solution of system 2 is a solution of 1 okay okay in this case the solution set of these two systems is the same okay the solution set for these two systems is the same that is the first theorem let me give this definition before I state this theorem systems 1 and 2 are uh, said to be equivalent if if the above holds the statement that I made just now okay I will not write down now all the details here systems 1 and 2 are said to be equivalent uh, if the if uh, this statement and the corresponding statement for uh, solutions of two being solutions of one okay together with uh, that statement these two statements if these two hold then we say that systems one and two are equivalent okay then we have the following theorem equivalent uh, systems have the same solution set equivalent systems have the same solution set okay see the, the, there are there are two uh, apparently different notions that we have discussed uh, till now one is uh, uh, the row equivalence of matrices that is one is doing elementary row operations on a matrix the other one is linear combinations of equations of uh, two systems okay. these are two different notions that we have discussed these two are related that is what we will discuss today these two notions are related and uh, let us see how uh, these two are related. So recall uh, the definition of uh, e, um, row equivalent matrices A is row equivalent to B this is the notation for that okay. A is row equivalent to B if B can be obtained from uh, A by a sequence 
of by a finite sequence of elementary row operations. Okay, and remember that we have seen that this is an equivalence relation. So let us now combine these two notions and prove the following theorem. Let A be rho equivalent to C, let A be rho equivalent to C, then the homogeneous systems A x equal to 0 and C x equal to 0. have the same solution set. Okay. If uh, A is rho equivalent to C then the homogeneous systems A x equal to 0 and C x equal to 0. Homogeneous system by which I mean the right hand side requirement vector is a 0 vector. These two systems have the same uh, solution set. Okay. So can you now see that these two notions are related. One is uh, solutions uh, sets being the same the other one is uh, doing elementary row operations on a matrix to get uh, another matrix a row equivalent matrix okay let us see how the proof goes A is row equivalent to C so there is a finite sequence of elementary row operations that one does on A to get C okay so let us say I have uh, a going to A1, going to A2, etc., going to AK, I will call this as the matrix C. So, this is my finite sequence of elementary row operation that I have performed on A to get the matrix C. I must show that the systems AX equal to 0 and CX equal to 0 have the same uh, set of solutions okay. One does not have to consider uh, all the terms of the sequence it is enough if we prove the statement for uh, one reduction can you see why. Sufficient to show that sufficient to show that if A is rho equivalent to C upon a single operation if A is rho equivalent to C upon a single elementary row operation if I am able to show that the solution sets are the same. I do not have to consider each term of the finite sequence I am claiming that uh, it is enough to show that uh, it is enough to show the following suppose A is obtained uh, C is obtained from A by a single elementary row operation I show that uh, the systems AX equal to 0 and CX equal to 0 have the same solution set. I hope this is clear instead of writing down the proof let me uh, just tell you orally you can uh, fill up the uh, details you derive C from A by a single elementary row operation look at any look at each of the three row operation that I have that we have written down E1 of A uh, is uh, the ijth term of uh, E1 of A is uh, I am looking at the first operation alpha Aij for uh, alpha not 0 asj if uh, i is equal to s and it is uh, 
a i j phi is not equal to s this is the first operation the second operation is uh, replacing the uh, s throw by the t throw s throw by s throw plus alpha times the t throw replace the s throw by alpha times the t throw so this is an operation performed only on the s throw all the other entries are the same all the others other rows remain the same finally interchanging of uh, any two rows rows s and t so that is uh, a t j if uh, i is equal to s it is uh, a s j if i is equal to t it is uh, a i j if uh, if so the other rows are left uh, as they are what is to be observed is that uh, each of these uh, operations can you see that it is a linear combination that is being performed on the rows of a okay. each of these operations if amounts to performing a linear combination on the rows of a okay so consider uh, ax equal to 0 and uh, cx equal to 0 each uh, equation in uh, cx equal to 0 is a linear combination of certain equations of ax equal to 0 because of the fact that an elementary row operation on uh, a is a linear combination of the rows of a okay and so the solutions of uh, ax equal to 0 satisfy the system cx equal to 0 okay that is the first observation the second part uh, I must show that every solution of cx equal to 0 satisfies ax equal to 0 but we had uh, seen that uh, each of these elementary row operations has an inverse operation and each of the inverse operations is, is an elementary row operation of the same type and so one could go from cx equal to 0 to ax equal to 0 that is any solution of cx equal to 0 is a solution of ax equal to 0 and hence the systems uh, are equivalent they have the same set of solutions okay so write down the details but uh, I have told you essentially what are the steps involved in the proof okay so this is the connection between elementary row operations and uh, linear combination of equations between uh, two systems okay okay let us look at uh, one or two numerical examples now okay I want to look at uh, uh, the problem of deriving uh, solutions of a homogeneous system how it is done by using elementary row operations okay okay let us look at the first problem uh, let us say we need to solve the system uh, ax equal to 0 where uh, the coefficient matrix a has uh, let us say 3 rows and uh, 4 columns so this is my uh, matrix A I am now seeking solutions of the system Ax equal to 0 I will do it by using the elementary row operations what I know is that by uh, the theorem that uh, we have uh, seen just now what I know is that if I get a matrix C upon doing uh, elementary row operations with a particular structure of C in mind then uh, the uh, solution set of Ax equal to 0 it is the same as the solution set of Cx equal to 0 C must be simple in order for me to write down the solutions probably immediately okay okay so let us do uh, the elementary row operations with a certain structure of C in mind and then we will formalize uh, why this structure of C we need uh, in the form of uh, what are called as row reduced echelon matrices okay so let us now proceed we will uh, let us do one elementary row operation at a time first I will interchange uh, row 1 and row 2 okay I will denote that by r1 double arrow r2 interchange row 1 and row 2, row two. it will be clear uh, in the next step as to why we are doing this then uh, a is equivalent to so I will use this symbol a is rho equivalent to the matrix 
the first row is 1 1 minus 1 0 second row is 3 minus 1 2 3 the last row remains the same the last row remains the same then uh, the second operation I would like to make uh, these two entries 0 okay why I would like to make these entries 0 that uh, will be made clear a little later so I will do these two operations now uh, row 2 I am replacing that by uh, minus 3 times row 1 plus row 2 okay this is one operation I will do a similar uh, operation for row 3 also row 3 the entry is 1 so I will replace row 3 by minus 1 times row 1 plus row 3 <coughs> then the row reduce matrix row equivalent to A is uh, the first row remains uh, as it is 1 1 minus 1 0 the second uh, row is minus 3 times this plus this 0 minus 3 minus 1 minus 4 3 plus 2 5 this remains as 3 that is the second row okay please check the calculations minus 3 times this this is 0 minus 3 times 1 that is minus 3 minus 1 minus 4 minus 3 times this is 3 plus 2 is 5 this is 0 so this will remain as it is the next uh, operation is minus first row plus the third row that is 0 0 2 and 1 so this is uh, what I get after uh, performing 3 elementary row operations the next uh, step uh, would be we could proceed uh, taking several uh, different steps but I would uh, like to proceed in this example as follows I will interchange uh, row 2 and row 3 I will interchange row 2 and row 3 to get uh, the following row equivalent matrix row 1 remains the same 1 1 minus 1 0 0 0 2 1 0 minus 4 5 3 okay this is my uh, latest uh, row equivalent matrix the next step is clear I divide the second row by the constant 2 okay so row 2 will be replaced by 1 by 2 times uh, row 2 and I will keep row 3 as it is then I get the following row equivalent matrix see the objective right now uh, may not be to uh, do a computationally efficient uh, uh, apply a computationally efficient procedure I am trying to arrive at a particular structure of C okay okay then uh, A is row equivalent to 1 1 minus 1 0 uh, second row is 0 0 1 1 by 2 third row remains as it is 0 minus 4 5 3 the next step will be to divide uh, the third row by minus 4 okay and so third row is minus 1 by 4 times the third row then uh, a is equivalent row equivalent to 1 1 minus 1 0 0 0 1 half 0 1 minus 5 by 4 minus 3 by 4 actually I could stop here to write down the solutions or do one more uh, elementary row operation okay let us say I stop here and write down the solution set what are the equations corresponding to A x equal to 0 now A has been written this is the matrix C I want to look at uh, C x equal to 0 what are the three equations that uh, give me uh, C x equal to 0 the first equation gives me x1 plus x2 minus x3 plus 0 times x4 
equal to 0. So probably I will remove that. Second equation gives me see remember A is a 3 by 4 matrix so the number of unknowns is 4. The second equation gives me x3 plus 1 by 2 x4 that is equal to 0. The third equation gives me x2 minus 5 by 4 x3 minus 3 by 4 x4 equal to 0. Okay, I am multiplying C on the right by the column matrix uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, the vector of unknowns. So I get these three equations. So what is clear is that uh, if I fix x4, the solution set can be determined that is x1, x2, x3, all the three can be determined in terms of x4. Okay. So let us say I fix uh, x4, let us call uh, x4 as uh, alpha for some uh, alpha arbitrary, then x3 can be determined, uh, uh, x3 can be determined from the second equation, x3 is uh, minus 1 by 2 alpha, x2 can be determined from the last equation x2 is 5 by 4 x3 plus uh, 3 by 4 x4. So this is uh, minus 5 by 8 uh, plus 6 by 8, 1 by 8 alpha. Is it okay? Minus 5 by 8 plus uh, 6 by 8 alpha, that is 1 by 8 alpha. Finally, x3 can be determined from the first equation, x3 is uh, x1 plus x2. x1, uh, uh, I want I want x1, I want x1, x1 is x3 minus x2, so that is uh, minus 1 by 2 alpha minus uh, 1 by 8 alpha. So that is minus 5 by 8 alpha minus 4 minus 1 minus 5 by 8 alpha. So that gives me the solution set for uh, this uh, system. So I am sure you will now agree that this uh, system Cx equal to 0 is much easier to handle than the original system Ax equal to 0, okay. But of course you need uh, to do this, uh, you take this effort of uh, reducing uh, A to a row reduced uh, to a row equivalent matrix. So let me write down the solution set for this example. The solution set uh, S is given by x1 is minus 5 by 8 alpha x2 is uh, 1 by 8 alpha, x3 is minus 1 by 2 alpha and x4 is alpha where alpha is uh, an arbitrary real number, alpha is an arbitrary real number. So what is first clear is that uh, there are infinitely many solutions, there are infinitely many solutions and please observe that the number of equations is less than the num strictly less than the number of unknowns, okay. This will be a precursor to what the we are going to prove a little later. That is if you have a rectangular system of homogeneous equations where the number of equations is strictly less than the number of unknowns, it always has a non-trivial solution. Okay, we are going to prove this. This is an example which already sort of gives a trailer. I can take alpha outside and write this as a set of all alpha times minus 5 by 8. 1 by 8 minus 1 by 2 and uh, 1 alpha belongs to R. So this gives me the set of all solutions of uh, 
the system homogeneous system A x equal to 0. Let us look at another example okay uh, a little simpler than this okay there are uh, 4 equations uh, in uh, 2 unknowns. The objective is uh, to determine completely the set of uh, all solutions of the homogeneous equation A x equal to 0. Okay, so let us do again elementary row operations on this uh, A, A is uh, equivalent to first row is kept as it is, the second row is uh, okay, so this time I am not writing down what are the operations okay, maybe I will do that uh, here, row 2 is minus uh, row 1 plus row 2, row 3 is uh, row 1 plus row 3 and row 4 is kept as it is because the entry is already 0. So I get uh, minus this plus this 0 minus 1 this plus this 0 3 0 1. The next step uh, will be to keep uh, the first row as it is the second row I perform this operation multiply by minus 1 okay. So I do not think I need to write that now multiply by minus 1 I get 0 1 third and fourth are kept as they are the next step will be so I write that here by the side I will uh, keep the second row as it is and then uh, do the operations based on the second row. So I will keep the second row as it is first row will be minus 2 times the second row plus the first row the new first row is minus 2 times the second row plus the first row so that gives me 1 and 0, third row is minus 3 times the second row plus the third row 0 0, fourth row is minus times minus 1 times the second row plus the fourth row 0 0 and I should stop here okay that is clear by looking at the entries of uh, the matrix which we call C. So can you tell me what is the solution set? There are two unknowns, four equations. So what this says is that the last three equations are redundant, they are unnecessary. The solution set is given by the first two equations. First equation gives me x1 is 0, second equation gives me x2 is 0. There are only two unknowns. So the solution set for this problem I will again call that as S is just 0 0. So this system has uh, only one solution and that is a 0 solution okay. So this system has uh, only the trivial solution okay. So these two numerical examples have been given in order to uh, consolidate uh, what we have uh, learned till now that is the idea of uh, performing elementary row operations on a matrix and also to see how it is uh, related to uh, solutions of uh, homogeneous equations. So we are right now concerned with uh, solutions of homogeneous equations, non-homogeneous equations will come a little later, we need the notion of uh, a row reduced echelon matrix for that and uh, the other difference between uh, a homogeneous system and a non-homogeneous system is that uh, a homogeneous system always has a solution a non-homogeneous system may not have a solution okay. If uh, a so homogeneous system always has a solution follows from the fact that 0 is a solution. A non-homogeneous equation system uh, in general may not have a solution okay. So that needs a different uh, treatment so we will come to that later. Let us now look at, um, look at the particular structure of uh, the final matrix C that we are arriving at. Okay, this has a spe specific structure let us formalize that is we will discuss uh, uh, what is called as uh, uh, a row reduced echelon matrix and then uh, formalize what we have done till now okay. So uh, the next uh, topic is row reduced echelon matrices and what does one do with row reduced echelon matrices. You will see that it gives the uh, solution set completely for uh, a system homogeneous or non-homogeneous okay. So, 
uh, I would uh, like to discuss the notion of a row reduced echelon matrix. A row reduced echelon matrix. A matrix R, I will assume that uh, it is uh, of uh, order uh, m by n, m rows n columns. A matrix R is uh, said to be is said to be a row reduced echelon matrix if uh, it satisfies the following uh, conditions. The first condition is the first non-zero entry of uh, each row the first non zero entry of each row is 1 that's the first property the first non zero entry of each row is 1 we will call this as the leading non zero entry this will be called the leading non zero entry that is the first non zero entry will be called uh, the leading non zero entry so we require that the leading non zero entry of uh, each row, each non zero row is one. Okay, so one could include uh, this uh, here also. The first non zero entry of each non zero row, the first non zero entry of each non zero row of r that must be 1 so the leading non zero entry of each non zero is 1 we'll use this terminology that's the first condition for a error reduced echelon matrix the second condition each column of r each column of r containing containing the leading non zero entry each column of each column of r containing a leading non zero entry containing the leading non zero entry of some row if i have a column which has a leading non zero entry corresponding to some row then all the other entries must be zero let me say has all the other entries zero each column has the other entries zero what is non zero the only non zero entry is the one that corresponds to the leading non zero entry of a particular row that's the second condition the third condition every zero row of r appears below every non zero row of r every zero row of r appears below every non zero row of r okay so just to clarify it uh, if uh, it has not been made clear to earlier uh, a row is called a zero row if all its entries are zero it's called a non zero row if it has at least one non zero entry okay okay so condition 3 says that the zero rows are stacked at the bottom the zero rows are stacked at the bottom something like uh, what has happened in the second example the final uh, condition that uh, must be satisfied by a row reduced echelon matrix is condition 4 let uh, 
i equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. are denote the non zero rows of R. R has non zero rows at the top, zero rows at the bottom. Let us say that there are R non zero rows. Now each non zero row has uh, a leading non zero entry appearing in a certain column. Each non zero row has uh, the leading non zero entry appearing in a certain column. Let us call these as columns 1, 2, 3 R, C1, C2, C3, CR. Let C1, C2, etc., CR denote, okay, C standing for the column, denote the columns in which uh, the leading non zero entries of the rows 1 2 3 etc are appear okay there are r uh, rows each row has a leading non zero entry i look at uh, the column in which uh, these entries appear column C1, column C2, etc. column CR, okay. Then what is the condition that must be satisfied for uh, a for the matrix R to be a row reduced echelon matrix? This condition must be satisfied. It's T1 strictly less than C2, less than C3, etc. less than CR, okay. These are the four conditions that uh, a row reduced uh, echelon matrix must satisfy. Let me conclude with uh, two or three examples. Let us look at the following, okay, to serve uh, as a means to consolidate. So let us look at the first example. Uh, Let us say A is uh, 0010100 0, 0, Zero 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 zero. This uh, is not a row reduced echelon matrix because the leading non-zero entry of the second row is not one. Okay. So this is uh, not row reduced echelon R R E. This is not a row reduced echelon matrix. The leading non-zero entry of uh, each row must be one. Let us look at another example. I will call this A1, this is A2, 0010100, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Very similar to the previous example, two entries have been changed. This has the first property that the leading non zero entry is 1, but uh, it does not have the second property. The third column has the leading non zero entry of the first row. Okay. We must have this entry 0 in order for this to be a row reduced echelon matrix. That is not the case. So, this is not a row reduced echelon matrix. Okay. Example 3, I will call it A3. simplest uh, row reduced echelon matrix okay this is a row reduced echelon matrix a non trivial example one could look at uh, example 2 if you want a4 that's 1001000 zero, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. is a row reduced echelon matrix okay We will discuss uh, further properties of uh, road reduced echelon matrices and how they help in solving uh, a non homogeneous system if it has a solution in the next lecture. Okay. You have any questions? C1 corresponds to uh, let us say the second column 
here C1 corresponds to C1 is 1, C2 is 2, C3 is 3. Here C1 is 1, C2 is 2. C1 is the column in which uh, the leading non-zero entry of that particular row appears. So C1, C2, etc. they are numbers. Okay. Other questions? Yes, C1, C2 are equal. In the definition, C1 is less than C2 is less than C1. It must be C1 is less than or equal to C2. Strictly less than. In this definition, we require that C1 strictly less than C2, strictly less than C3, etc., strictly less than CR. Not equal to. C equal number 1 is C1, C1 equal to 1. In the first example. No, fourth, for the fourth, fourth example, example sir. they mean C1 equal to 1. Yeah. Fourth example is uh, this one. Yeah, C1 is 1. Yeah. But it is not the case for first example. If you explain with first example, it would be better. Than uh, see, for the fourth example, C1 is 1, C2 is 2. The column number uh, where it appears. Exactly. The column number where it appears. Yeah, so what is the problem with the first example? What is the context? No, can you explain with the first example? Can you explain with the first example? Can I explain the first example? This is not a row reduced echelon matrix. Okay. Because uh, the leading non zero entry of the second row is uh, 2, not 1. This is not a row reduced echelon matrix because uh, the leading non zero entry of the first row appears in the third column. The third column, the other entries must be 0. That is uh, your. Uh, uh, condition 2 that is not the case the third column the leading non zero entry is 1 the other entries must be 0 that is not the case so for the, uh, this reason it is not uh, it is not row reduced echelon matrix okay any other question so c1 c2 etc cr are the column numbers are the column numbers okay Yes. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0